Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Kelly with The Way We Go 2.0. And Airstream Globetrotter fans, old and new, today is maintenance day. Okay, so one of the first things that we noticed with the Airstream, of course, uh, on most versions anyway, you've got the rear bumper storage. And we keep uh, our 50 amp electrical cord uh, back there, uh, kind of big bulky thing, especially in winter, that thing's a beast to kind of handle because it's frozen, not frozen, but it's just really hard plastic. The metal is uh, hardened because of the cold weather and so forth, so it's really a beast to work with. So we coil it up inside there uh, I've got chalks uh, in there and just some other miscellaneous stuff just to kind of keep out of the way but uh, or things that I needed at uh, this end of the uh, of the of the globe trotters but I've always been concerned about security <clears throat> no matter what you have back here <clears throat> excuse me but especially in our case with that uh, that power uh, cord back here uh, it's heavy duty it's expensive and you know it can walk away pretty easily here because there's really no security to speak of whatsoever i've been wondering how i can physically secure this i think i've found a solution uh and we're going to walk through that first here shortly here's what i'm going to do i've got a, um, a lockable hasp here and i went with this because a uh, regular hasp and lock uh, would be fine i don't know that it would provide a, a whole lot more uh, uh, security than what this does but as you can see it's just a uh, it's kind of a built-in lock with it and it has keys and uh, I thought well you know another lock's not gonna kill me another key uh, better that than just fumbling around with the physical lock and everything else so we're gonna go with this it's also offset a little bit you got this little ridge right here if you come down under the tag light I'm gonna assume that's pretty much dead center close enough for government work but it's got uh, a little ridge here, and I don't know if you can really tell or not, but this uh, lock uh, assembly also has a ridge that will kind of fit in there. And it will allow it to not, when I have to bend it, uh, we are gonna have to cut into the, to the black flap here a little bit. Uh, I was back and forth on whether or not I wanted to use a tin snip on it. I probably could use a tin snip, but my, I'm certainly not a metal worker in my experience with tin snips is that they sometimes cut at an angle or curve or whatever. Again, I'm no expert, I defer to those who are. You know, uh, Feel free to leave comments, obviously, positive, constructive comments, but what I'm going to do is I've got just a little mini hacksaw here, and uh, if you can see that, I'm gonna use it because it's not very bulky, it is a hacksaw. I'm only gonna go in probably a half inch, maybe three quarter inch into the, uh, into the cover here, and then over and then back. So. This will be all I'll need. It doesn't get all clunky and doesn't bang everything up. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a start. I'll probably go grab a rag um, or something just to kind of buffer it so I don't get all crazy into the back of the Airstream or you know, scuff the buff bumper up itself or anything like that. So um, let's go ahead and get started and get cut. Okay, so in deference to my butt, I went to get a something to set on because I'm old and so are my knees. Also got a Leatherman, um, it's multi-purpose tool, a magnet on there. I've got a Leatherman, it's multi-purpose tool, Gerber make them, uh, Swiss Army knife guys. I've always just been fond of the Leatherman. Uh, probably ever since they came out, I had one when I was in the Marine Corps and uh, they've, they've never let me down. They have a lifetime warranty, I believe on them. So you break it, they'll refix it, uh, they'll repair it, they'll send it back to you. Say so don't abuse it, it's not made for you know, dropping an engine and whatever, and you go back and continue to march, so to speak. But uh, anyway, uh, I've just got this to uh, to help. I've not found many things that a Leatherman can't do, for better or worse. So I'll be using it to bend it back. So you'll get to see this uh, trial and error. Again, we'll have the benefit of editing and, and uh, a little speeding up uh, type thing, whatever. But uh, you'll get to see this real time, but maybe kind of sped up. So I'm going to start by uh, measuring uh, out my, uh, uh, where I'm gonna have to cut in. It will be probably, you know, you always wanna measure twice, cut once. For me, it's usually cut five times and don't measure at all. But uh, I'm not gonna do that today. Not on the Airstream. I've got some blocks and I've got a cable lock in here. Our uh, surge protector thing is in here as well. So, you know, with the cord and the surge protector, 
Uh, I've got probably two or three hundred dollars worth of stuff in here, I'm guessing, uh, just in that. Uh, I don't keep anything else really back here because this is not a dry environment. Uh, it will get wet, so whatever you put back here has to be okay with getting wet. Make sure that this is facing correctly so that when I turn it and have it on, you see the key just goes into here and will turn the handle. And so that's how it locks itself right there. It sort of turns that handle uh, parallel to the hole there. And then when you unlock it, it puts it so that the key falls through. I mean, the, uh, the bracket falls through and voila, you got separation. So that's why we chose it. And I'm gonna measure this so that I've got enough coverage on the back to be worthwhile. Should cover that in. But uh, there's, so there's some overlap, but it doesn't like get in the way of other things. So let's kind of double check. All right, so if I put that there, the screws will not quite line up to get into the bumper. The way I need them to. So what I'm going to do, and it'll make for a little less cutting, I'm going to go ahead and bring it right out to the edge of the bumper. Just kind of eyeball it here, centered. And I'm going to mark this with a Sharpie. Just sort of an outline of generally where I want everything to be. It's all said and done. And this is also something that uh, I can wipe off with an alcohol wipe or what have you later on. Even though it's blue, I can still see it on the bumper. Get these keys out of here, out of the way. I got that there. So I now know generally where I need to cut. So I made an outline of the asp. So I've got probably a half inch in about an inch and a quarter over and half inch back. So, I'll go ahead and speed this up for uh, video purposes. Get my rag here so I don't bang things up. Get this party started. Also, when you're cutting, you know, you are gonna have a lot of little metal flakes uh, floating around if it's windy or if you're just breathing on it or you know whatever uh, I recommend glasses I'm no safety expert I'm no OSHA representative this is just common sense in my mind you're gonna have really tiny little flakes of metal here I kind of puff them out of the way you know whatever you can wipe them I've got a tear or a microfiber rag over there you can wipe them whatever you do and then I recommend gloves because some of these splinters after a while they'll get into your hands and it's something that like that evening you'll be like what in the world so just keep in mind, you are going to be cutting this. There are going to be little metal flakes. So. Okay, so uh, got the, uh, the cuts on the side going. Again, they were about a half inch or so. So now what I'm going to do, and again, I'm not a metal worker. Look, there are guys out there, you've got all the tools and the tricks. I get it, but this is a home fix, but I think it's gonna help us a whole lot with our security. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Leatherman and just kind of go in here and bend it back where I need it. Get that metal out of the way. My concept is to go this way cut off that lip, try to stay as, as, uh, as straight as I can, but I think it's gonna be okay. All right, so here this goes. Wasp. Look, you don't bite, they don't bite. Okay, 
so we're good. The, uh, the metal gave me a little more grief uh, going that way. Started to curve a little bit, plus my uh, tool began failing, so I'll need to tighten that up. But anyway, look, $3 at Home Depot or whatever, who cares? So what I'll do, now that I've got that taken care of, what do we do? We go to our Leatherman that has a built-in file. We're gonna file that uh, down a little bit, make it a little less jagged, line it up a little better. Perfect. Um, got the rough edges off with the, the, the file on the Leatherman. By the way, this is a Leatherman Super Tool 300. Leatherman Super, Super Tool 300, about 60 or so bucks, I think, at a store. Uh, but anyway, uh, so filed that down. It's got a perfect fit. I've got maybe a uh, 16th of an inch on each side, so there is a little bit of wiggle room for shifting and you know aging and, and uh, normal wear and tear so time to drill okay so got my drill here if you don't have a cordless drill you really kind of need to get one if you can afford to get an impact wrench uh, just because but anyway um, I don't think I'm gonna need a drill bit this big to drill the pilot holes so let's take this one off Duh. so what I've done <laughs> just one of those who cares whatever kind of thing so I've got these drill uh, and screw uh, kits from DeWalt. But uh, instead of having to stop and look, and I wonder which is which, and yeah, they're shaped a little differently, I just wrote drill and screw, just to keep it simple. So, anyway, um, so I'm gonna drill some pilot holes for this uh, for the screws here, just to make life easy. And you don't wanna over torque the, uh, uh, you know, you don't wanna over torque the screws and, and they break and so forth. So I'm gonna find uh, which size would be best for a little pilot hole to get the party started there. Probably have those small drill bits as they like to break pretty easily. So you kind of have to be pretty, you have to be careful with them, gentle with them. Don't get all crazy because uh, they'll break and you'll be the one left holding the bag. Here we go. I'm gonna get the hole started. I'm gonna scar the the bumper so that I know where I want it to go. And then I'll move the uh, lock out of the way. Measure, measure twice, cut once. I know it goes against everybody's philosophy. I think we're gonna be good. One of these might be a challenge, but I think we'll be all right with it. Let's go ahead and finish up the holes. Again, don't put too much downward pressure and certainly do all you can to not put any lateral pressure because these these, uh, this uh, uh, drill bit here is not much bigger than a pencil lead. So just let it go through. Let the bit in the drill do the work for you. Don't force it, it'll go. There we go. You to be mindful of the metal shavings. So go back and finish them up a little bit. Make sure they're nice and clean. Okay. Mindful of the shavings. I'm not going to blow these out because, you know, getting them in your finger is annoying. Getting them in your eye is, uh, is can be a game changer. And it is a little bit breezy today, so I'm not going to get too froggy with the... Uh, metal shavings. Okay, we're good there. we get the hasp, line it up, make sure it's going to be where we want it. Okay, so just for uh, alignment's sake, I'm going to go ahead and uh, screw these screws in because that way I'll get a, a more sure 
um, set up with the, uh, I got a, a, a surer setup, more sure, sure that ever set up with the uh, uh, holes. All right, so we've got a pilot hole, but you still have to be careful with it. Don't want to strip it. And I think this is going to be a, actually this head is too big. Let's try it again. So the hole's not quite big enough, so I'm gonna have to grab it out a little bit or get a little bit bigger one. I'd rather be a little bit small and have to route it out than just strip it down, uh, strip it out the first time through. So I'm gonna go a little bit bigger on it. Pilot hole. Okay, so went a little bit bigger, routed it out some. Again, I don't I just don't want to make the, the hole too big and then it uh, it just does no no good for me whatsoever, so. This is the one I was afraid was gonna be off a little bit, and it is. Okay, so, I've got the, uh, the lock in place. I'm going to set this hasp over here, get it lined up so that it opens, and I'll mark the uh, holes for it. Okay, I know it's not rocket science, but I've seen people do it, and I've almost done it a couple of times. I've seen people put hats on like this. They're like, oh gosh, I've got all kind of range and, and distance and everything. Problem is your screws are over here and they can be unscrewed. So the idea behind these is to put your screws in so that the hasp covers up the screw so they can't screw this out, they can't screw this out. And uh, so, that's a little lock and hasp 101. You'd be surprised, if not shocked. <clears throat> Just saying. You can see, working, working with just a nub there. So, you know, I have no room to talk. All right, so you want to get these screws in so that they're snug. You don't want to strip them out. <clears throat> if you have uh, adjustable speeds on your uh, drill, or if you're just doing it by hand, that's fine. Go until you get uh, a decent amount of resistance, and then stop. Um, it'll hold. But again, you know, we're not creating a bank fault here. We're creating a, a deterrent, uh, hopefully to either stop somebody and have them move on. Um, or at the very least, make a lot of noise and make themselves noticeable. Uh, you know, whatever. But if somebody wants in it, they're going to take it. It's just the way it goes. But at least this will make them think twice or slow down or what have you. There is a little bit of a bend here. <clears throat> All right, so there was a lip created by the uh, uh, the, the angle of the, uh, the cover back here. But it didn't quite make up the difference. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to bend this out a little bit, bend the hasp part just a little bit, maybe an eighth of an inch, so that I can turn this hasp. So, you know, you're watching it real time, you get to see the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay, so after a little bit of uh, sunset shadow movement, it's, you know, the, the beauty of editing and video, we're done. A uh, little encouragement. <clears throat> uh, Kind of bent the uh, bent the hasp in place a little bit. It was a little more of a challenge. You know, it's it was just enough to kind of mm, you know you couldn't really like ah, but you couldn't really man. So you had to kind of yeah. So um, those are industry terms. You can look them up. 
But anyway, uh, so yeah, after a little bit of encouragement, it is here, it's in place. You know, it's, uh, put it on here, twist it, pull your key out, and you're good. Now you can still leave those in place if you like, the ones that come with it. So that's it. Uh, it's better, I think, than having a, a lock and uh, a padlock to carry around. I do have two extra keys I've got to carry, but they're small, they're no big deal. They look like all the other ones. I'll probably put a little cap on it to uh, color, indicate what it is, what have you. But uh, anyway, um, there you go. It's unlocked, it's locked, and uh, there I go there, and, learn it, and you're good. Okay, so I, I realized I never did really show you a very good close up of the final version. You can see right there, I did sort of have to uh, build it up a little bit and um, uh, kind of angle it because of this ridge here on the uh, the, the flap, um, so the cover rather. So anyway, I did have to build it up maybe an eighth of an inch, I guess it is, uh, right there. And I just took actually uh, the piece of metal that I cut out of the cover bent it a little bit and just kind of wedged it in there. So again, we're not talking uh, Wells Fargo uh, vault action here. This is just something to slow everybody down, make a lot of noise if they try to steal your stuff and prevent the grab and go scenarios. So I did want to update this with a close picture of the final version. And uh, there you go. Take care. It's Kelly and Kathy. Away we go 2.0 and Airstream Globe Trotter fans old and new. And we will where to go catch you down the road later